Some things are better left unsaid. Take it from me, some things are better left unsaid. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Unspoken. Uh, this is episode 10. Uh, we are diving into Black Lives Matter, racism, uh, when people say all lives matter, and we have Ayanda here uh, to help us unpick this and just to give us his point of view. Um, Ayanda, thank you for joining us. Please introduce yourself. Um, hey, Josh and um, Jonathan, thanks for having me. My name is Ayanda Kumalo. Um, a lot of people know me as TK. I am a recording Christian artist um, and a musical worship leader, born and raised in Zimbabwe, currently based in Chicago. Um, I have the privilege of traveling the world, doing musical uh, worship in various places, conferences to retreats to churches, uh, partnerships with some amazing ministries. Um, I'm currently um, in partnership with Moody Radio, doing a kind of worship nights with them. Mm. Um, and featured with some really good friends, the Worship Initiative, uh, Robbie C and Shane and Shane, um, and Loop Community and various other um, ministries that I've been able to po really partner with. Um, the music ministry and being part of a conversation about race and racism and the mm. local church. Oh, wow. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's awesome. We're really, that's a mouthful and I really, uh, well, we're so happy that you, you've got this opportunity to do your passion. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, Zimbabwe. I mean, that's uh, that's had its own a uh, whole uh, a whole <laughs> own history of uh, racism, and you know that's got a long long journey as it is, isn't it? It's got, yeah, it it has a lot of baggage. Um, then uh, Rhodesia, pre-independence mm. and post-independence. Mm. So the conversation hasn't really just shifted um, mm. with regards to and and it goes back to kind of what what we then define racism as, mm. and people have various different definitions of racism. Mm. The way I see it is when you prejudice another race, mm. you judge uh, someone based on their appearance, appearance um, and not the substance of their actions and their character. Mm. So, I, so some people will say, well, you, um, black people can't be racist. And, and, and then some people also say, well, it depends if you're in power, then when you discriminate along race lines, that's racism. But as someone who doesn't have power makes a derogatory term against someone else, that's not considered racism, which mm. I disagree with. Because at the, when, you, when you get down to just the, the basic fundamentals of racism, it's the discrimination against someone of another race. Mm. And that goes, it's not just black and white. There's Chinese, there's... China and the Japanese have a history that's mm -hmm. also based on racism um, that a lot of us don't know about, but you know, the more you get to understand what's going on there, you start to understand the dynamics of mm -hmm. the politics that happen in that region. Um, then you have uh, Chinese and, and, and Africans currently playing out in the world today. You have people in, in Latin America, um, within those contexts and how people, even within the Latin community, if you're darker and you're lighter, there's discrimination. Mm. So, there's, so the, the conversation of racism isn't just between white people and black people. Mm. This is, it's a sin issue fundamentally, but it plays out across the spectrum across the world. Yeah, so the original definition, um, like over 20 years ago, 1989, was about the superiority of, the, of a particular race. Yeah. Um, but closer or re more recently, it's more about the prejudice and discrimination. Uh, one of the phrases here that I'm liking is the antagonism directed against a person uh, or people based on their, their membership or to a particular race or ethnic group. And mm. so I like what you're saying. It's, um, it's not necessarily about being above the person, but it's definitely, even if you're on the same levels and uh, in government or whatever, it's, it's a, um, based on the fact that they're not your color or not your culture, that you think that they should be pushed down. Uh, yeah. Do you think, do you think that's um, what's happening in, uh, in America somewhat with this whole Black Lives Matter movement? Um, that uh, white people are pushing people down or what do you think is happening uh, in America at, at the moment? So America is complicated. 
Um, so I, I, I won't be able to speak for all black, I, I can't speak for all black people. I can't speak for the whole history of, of America, but the time I've spent here and some of the conversations I've been having has led me to understand that there, there, is, there is a history that has not been resolved. And that's a 400 year plus history mm. where people were brought here, not of their own free will, were put to work and a, an economy and an industry was built off that free labor. And so there's, there's, so with that, there was the abuse of people, even within that 400 years of free labor. So there's emotional, psychological trauma that mm. has been passed down. It didn't just stop at one generation. Mm. It's been passed down. Now what's happened is at the same time, this generation of this people group were being taken advantage of, a different part of, a, a different people group were building their wealth. Mm. They're establishing themselves to, to, to build a system that kind of fell on them. Without them, things wouldn't move. Things wouldn't function. Mm. So, with, so that's just kind of a, a it's basic 101, trying to abbreviate what's happened. So what's happening now is um, in the 1960s, there was this endeavor to ad start to address, like it's always been people wanted to address it, but there's now a constitutional application to try address the 400 years of what happened. Mm. Now, the, the, the way people will then look at it for some people is, well, it was addressed then. The constitution got changed. Mm. You, don't, you don't change 400 years of trauma mm. in one day. Mm. If that, that goes for any, you look at someone who's, uh, we'll take an example of a, a, of a wife who's been abused in a marriage, physically and emotionally in a marriage for 30 years. The day she gets divorced doesn't mean now everything's okay. Mm. You're still dealing with the, the scar tissue of what happened mm. over those 30 years. And in the case of America, just from my perspective of what I've been seeing is what we are starting to see is the scar tissue of 400 years and, and trying to deal with it or haven't, haven't dealt with it actually. Mm the way it's supposed to have been dealt with. So that's what conversations about reparations come up. Mm -hmm. um, and so, the, so when, we, when, we, when we come to BLM, the two things actually, there's the, there's the organization mm -hmm. and then there's the statement. And I think we need to differentiate. We have to make that difference mm -hmm. because there are believers um, in the local church who will say Black Lives Matter, but don't agree with the organization because some of the principles that it's founded on don't agree biblically. Mm -hmm. So we can't lump everyone in and say, well, you support Black Lives Matter. No, I don't support the organization, mm -hmm. but I support the statement. And it doesn't, by saying Black Lives Matter, the argument say, is, it doesn't mean that every other life mm. doesn't matter, but the way a certain people group has been treated or is continually being treated, mm. we have to then magnify to say, hey guys, these people do matter. Mm. Mm. We, have to, we now have, have to intentionally make that statement. What's happening is, is and it, it's an impatience. You have, it's a society that has come to a breaking point people have taken so much for so long and you have a new generation, a younger generation who are like, we don't want this, we're, we're, we're done. We're done trying to be gracious, trying to address this, but people are not making the action steps to address this issue. Mm -hmm. So now what happened with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and this Trayvon Martin, there's so many things is, so many incidents, and there was even an incident yesterday in Kenosha, Wisconsin, um, a police incident, and we don't know all the facts, but w the, the camera video footage shows the young man being shot, getting back into his car, and people are now burning and looting. 
that's that's th- those are just the fruits of the root issue. Those are the consequences, the scarred tissue of what's happened. So you've, you've explained that so nicely. Uh, and, uh, it's, I mean, you've answered so many questions and I mean, that is such wisdom coming through there. I mean, that's really what it is, isn't it? it it's, it's the years and years and years. And it's, in a way, it's, it's more spiritual than I think people know. I, I think it's, it's a spiritual handing down of, of years and years of years of that, of that hurt. And, and it just gets carried over. You know, there's that famous quote where it says that racism isn't, uh, is, is taught. It's not, you know, no one's born racist. But, yeah. it's, but it, it's more than that. It's, 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 a, it's a hurt that gets, you know, almost passed down. It's not really teaching it. It's a, it's a pain that can sometimes be subliminal, I think, you know, yes. where that, that people don't necessarily know, but you pick it up from your parents, you pick it up from your grandparents and your grandparents' grandparents. Um, that is that is really such an interesting viewpoint, which I, I mean, that's just that's mind blowing. Um, do you think, Ayana, that by you know, there's a lot of tearing down of statues, and these people mm-hmm. here in the UK, especially, they yep. you know they were covering statues. Any anybody that might have looked at a at a black band in the wrong way, they were like, please don't tear us the statues down, and they're covering them up, and they, you know the, the the white community were very worried about it because they're like. Listen. Yes. Okay. Fine. He he might he might have you know he might have done something wrong, um, or he did have a slave, um, mm. but that wasn't why the statue was erected. You know, he, you know they they kind of saying like, listen. Yes, he wasn't perfect, but the reason we put him here is to, you know, for for in our area particularly, it was um, Brayton Powell, who was the father of um, of uh, of the Scout movement, the Boy Scouts. Yeah. Uh, and they were so worried about it because because he, he did. I mean, he didn't live a right life. You know, he, he mm. didn't treat people the way they're supposed to be treated. And and then the other people were like, well, the fact is, you know, that what his achievements were were greater than his his wrongdoings. So that's what we are honouring. We um, do you think that by kind of not rewriting history because that's what it is. It's taking the statues down to anybody that it reminds people of the bad days. And mm-hmm. also there's, there's two bands in the U, in America that um, Lady Antebellum and Dixie mm-hmm. Chicks, which actually changed the name because their names yep. refer to the depression. Um, do you think about people doing this, does it make a difference? Uh, you know, do you feel, well, that's actually, I really appreciate that. That's actually really nice of them. Or yes, we need to take those statues down. Or is it kind of like, listen, no, that's not going to change our lives and it's not necessary. Yeah. How do you feel about those things happening? And th- those are very good questions. I, before I even get to that, I think the question we need to ask is who's telling the history? Hmm. And whose perspective is it about that individual? Hmm. So you have two people groups, one traumatized and really affected by that person's actions. Hmm. And then another people group saying, well, yeah, he did some bad stuff, but we, we, we're celebrating all the good stuff. And, and so when I answer that question, my question is, but are there other individuals that we all agree on mm. that we can put up there that actually unites us? Mm. Um, so case in point, um, I think the, the narrative is what then starts to define the bigger conversation of whether statues stay up or, or come down. Mm. So I, I look at it this way, especially when it comes to like the Confederate flags in America and the, um, and the, the Confederate statues. Mm. What did those men do? So if, if men were trying to defend slavery, as the church, is that the right stance to take? We're not saying cancel history and cancel that person. What we're saying is, why are we putting up a statue? We're celebrating this person. Does that, that person that we're celebrating represent all of us? Mm. If it's going to stand in a place that embodies all of us. Mm. Or if you want to keep it in a certain neighborhood or some part of society that it's only that people group who want to celebrate it and they all agree on that, I don't have, a, I don't have an issue with that. Mm. Um, I had the privilege of going to the, um, the World War II Museum in Jerusalem. Mm. 
and and walking through that and seeing images and seeing artifacts from kind of what mm. Nazi Germany did. And I was like, I was, there, I was like, man, this this is heart wrenching. And then and then Stalin did what he did to his own people in Russia. Mm. And I sat back and I said, and then I sat down with I have some really good friends with German. And their heads drop when, when you bring up Adolf Hitler, their heads drop. And they're taught in school that is part of our history, but it's a shameful history. We we know it's part of our history. And yes, there's certain things that he did that advantaged Germany. But the the, the but the collective of the consequences of his actions were more detrimental to a people group. It wasn't the whole of the world by affected it, but there was a people group that was really affected by his actions. Mm -hmm. And then whose narrative is now telling the story? It's now a collective. Hmm. Germans and Jews are now saying, this dude did these things. Mm -hmm. And because of his actions, these were the consequences. Mm -hmm. And I think when we, when we look at our statues and the people we want to celebrate, especially in a diverse society and culture, we need to be putting people up there that we all collectively honor and respect and say their actions are rep what represent us now. Mm -hmm. We all, I think, have to be, yes, we, it's, it's, it's this hunky story, this perfect thing that we all agree. No, if majority of people are sitting there saying, Man, I, I, respect, I respect Michael Jordan. We're going to put a statue up of Michael Jordan mm -hmm. because all of, all of us, he's an example, all of us collectively, um, generally, generally, will say, yeah. yes, that's the dude. He represents basketball. Mm -hmm. If we're all collectively saying that, great. But if you have half of society having issues with him and another half saying, like, that's it, then before we even put them up there, we need to address the issues we have in between and why a certain people group disagrees mm. instead of just imposing it on this other group of people. And I think in this case of statues and, and, and the bigger conversation, that for me go, plays into whose narrative, who's telling the story. Mm. And are they being honest about the baggage that person comes to the table mm. and then if I'm imposing all of that on you, the people group that were affected by his actions, am I really honoring what the collective, us, mm. and what we stand for? So you would suggest then perhaps that um, in, a, in a, a museum or in a place of uh, understanding to, to educate yes. people, that would be a yeah. great place for them to move statues to or to you know, have pictures of and have education. Uh, so not forget the past, but to, to learn from it and to, to grow or to move on. Yes. And, and I, so I'd say have, have a museum of history. Like, so in the case of England, have the great English mu his history museum. Mm -hmm. And not just about birds and bees and trees, mm -hmm. you know, but tell the whole story, good mm -hmm. and bad. Mm -hmm. Move those. So when people look and say, who is this dude? Oh, he was he was born in Cornwall. He did these things and he mm. also did these things. Mm. Let that be something that we then take a step back and say, I now know the full story, mm. good and bad, mm. and I learn and I grow from it. Mm. As opposed to, yeah, go ahead. So, so yeah, so I, I like the, the thing of, um, now keeping the education and keeping the museums and learning, uh, but there's also some stick I feel like in in sports where uh, lots of um, Americans or some sports people you mentioned uh, Michael Jordan in this case he didn't yeah. do it, but they they kneeling and and not kneeling and there's a recently there was a cricket cricket West Indies versus England where they had a moment of silence. Uh, are these similar steps forward to like taking down statues? Are these positive and and why are people getting stick for for not kneeling is it is it <laughs> no, no, it's, it's a very 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 valid question um so right i think we we need to understand where society and culture is right now i think we do have um you do have a herd mentality that's mm -hmm. one 
you also have a younger generation that's fed up mm-hmm. with the old, some of our older, like some of our, I'm part of slightly old, I'm, yeah, I'm in my <laughs> early 30s. Some of our baggage and our parents' baggage that has not been addressed. So you have a younger generation that has seen things, they have their own baggage to deal with, but because we haven't fully worked through our stuff, it's been piled on them. Mm-hmm. So they're like, no, we're not gonna deal with your mess. So we're gonna just cut straight. This is how we're responding. And we wanna move on to other stuff that's really like, it's, it affects them, but they also have their own baggage that they're trying to work through. With the case of kneeling, um, I always say this, why, we need to ask people, why do people do what they do? Like if, if someone's kneeling, I would want, I, I understand it because I have conversations, but I think for those who are watching this, who are like, man, they're disrespecting the flag or disrespect, disrespecting the anthem. I think people need to stop, stop listening to politicians on either side, trying to frame the conversation for you, but actually sit down with an individual that's doing it and say, hey, I noticed you did this, why? Help me understand. So by actually listening, to the reasoning, then we can start to formulate, okay, actually there's a history. This person is doing this because they feel that this issue hasn't been addressed. And they have to go to this extreme to get our attention to start to address the issue that hasn't been addressed for so long. So I've heard the narrative about the whole kneeling conversation. And I heard, you know, the backstory of why Colin Kaepernick did it. And he sat down with the Marine guy and the Marine guy said, instead of sitting down during the anthem, it's more respectful to kneel. So he knelt, but then some people took it as he's disrespecting the flag and he doesn't honor and care about America. Um, But then when people sat down with Colin Kaepernick and the Marine guy, it was about, no, we, we need to raise the awareness of the issues that are going on with the relationship between the police and um, people of color and how there's a, there's a sense and there's some evidence that it hasn't, there isn't just law for everyone. Mm. Certain people are treated differently. So he's raising awareness to that. So when I, so when I hear that explanation, I, I will go off that to say, okay, I trust you. That's, that's why you did what you did. It helps me understand that. There's some people who, have, who may kneel and don't understand the, actually the real reason why people are kneeling. And I think at that point I would say, pause, get to know why people are doing it before just jumping on the bandwagon and doing it. Now with the whole aspect of what's now happened is with the whole, what happened with George Floyd was this visual video of a man dying in front of all of us. Mm -hmm. And then people, now people like, okay, now we really have an issue. And I think, but prior to that, people have been saying, guys, we have a deep rooted issue in America and partially it's a global issue we need to address it. But I think we've got to the point in society where it's me, myself, and I, and only until it affects me, do I start actually start to make the effort to do things. Mm -hmm. So the kneeling thing, because it started to affect people across the world. Now people are like, okay, we now have to do something. We're going to kneel in solidarity, which is a good thing but we need to fully understand the complexities of the conversation. We need to fully understand why people are doing what they're doing and what are the best action steps that need to be taken in our context, not just because America is doing it. This is the thing we do, but what do we need to address in our own context if we have an issue? So if we don't have an issue, people won't see the need to do it. So we need to self analyze. And if there's an issue, acknowledge it, and then say, what are the action steps that need to get taken? And I think because there's been, we have failed as a collective, even within the local church, to have this conversation mm-hmm. and offer biblical steps to address it, frame it biblically. A lot of people outside the local church are starting to frame the responses to the sin of racism. I, I think it's, it's such a difficult thing with the kneeling because there's so many different people with their different views of is it right is it wrong and the media just seems to like to stir the pot as soon as i mm-hmm. see i mean over here i think it was last week where there was a, a bunch of rugby players 
um, that didn't kneel, and there were eight of them were Springboks. Um, yep. And and the, obviously with the history of of the Springboks is such massive, and immediately the you know the, the 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 director of rugby in South Africa was called into his office, you know, and yep. just people, why are they doing this? They're all racist, and we've come so far, and the, and the newspapers are blowing it out of proportion, and now we're slipping back to racism. We've just and and I'm like, well, has anybody asked them why? Has anybody thought? Listen, go ask them. What 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 were the reasons? You know, whatever they are. You know, um, personally, you know, I, I've I've never been in a situation where I've had to take a knee, um, but I I kind of thought that you know maybe you know, would I? You know, I, you know, personally as a Christian, you know, I'd you know take a knee for for mm. prayer for God, and I'd take a knee for my wife if I'm proposing or something like that. And would I do it? I don't know. You know, you don't know. It's something that I have to really seriously consider. But no one's actually gone and asked these people what, why, you know, what's happening, you know. Um, and, I, and I think that might be the case in many in areas where, um, where the media is just blowing it bigger than it really is or specifically showing more looting than then actually happen or I don't know I, I, you know we we can only really understand what's happening when from what we see on the TV unfortunately you know unless you're there you know in you know us here in the UK we only see you know people crashing Audis into shop yeah. windows and you know and it's, and then it just whatever so you only see what you're being shown because we're not there anymore you know um, so it's, it's very difficult and dangerous but as you say I mean everybody needs to do it in their own reason, then we need to have the conversation with it and preferably hear it from their own mouth, yeah. you know, and not get a second or third hand through filtered through to, through news. Um, it's, it's, it's a big, I mean, it's a really big, big subject. Um, I just see now we, we're running out of time soon. So if we do, John, should we? I like, yeah. yeah, I'd like to uh, perhaps, Either we can pause here, but I definitely think we should be speaking on the spiritual side of the conversation. Mm. Um, yep. So if, if you want to, we can we can pause and make this a, a second yes. section, or we should offer the spiritual side. No, no. Let's let's pause. Let's let's pause the first part here, uh, and then we will go straight into the next one. And I might actually just edit this and actually put them together as one very long uh, talk. Um, so Ayana. Yeah. Hang on, hang on a sec there and don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right. Some things are better left unsaid. 